Thank you, Pam. Well, Jeff Mulgan of Nesta did a talk in Cambridge Univ uh, Cardiff University just the other week talking about useful versus useless universities. I think we're here with four very useful universities, and thanks to the team for inviting us up today to talk about inclusion in STEM and STEAM. For us, inclusion is about gender, it's about social demographic, it's about parents, it's about teachers, it's about universities, all getting involved to power communities to inspire children with creativity, because it takes a whole village to inspire a child. I'm reading a book at the moment by Christian Warman about fire, called Fire and Steam, that really should be lowercase s-t-a-m, about the steam revolution, how the railways revolutionised literally the world, our economy, society. How many people saw this talk last week by Elon Musk launching the Mark III Tesla? I'm going to show you the 20-second version of that. So basically, Elon Musk there launched the Model 3 Tesla, which was quite simply not possible without steam in society, creativity, business, problem-solving, technology. We need steam. We need a steam-powered revolution to take society, to take the world to the next yes. level. Five years ago, I've got to my admission, I'm just a parent, I'm a dad who saw this Ken Robinson TED talk, which I hadn't realised how much this polarises the world between creativity and knowledge-based curricula. I gave a career up um, to work in creativity with STEAM, Karen Literacy, with, uh, with a literacy intervention organisation. Guy Claxton talks about how we have to help our children find out what they want to be good at and help them pursue that dream. That's the role of parents, educators, society, everybody involved here. And Robert Winston said to us, you've got to get them in primary. But primary teachers are flat out teaching children to read, write, and, and do maths. They haven't got time to be creativity experts, science experts. So we believe in bringing communities in to primary schools. And that's what we're doing with STEAM Co. So basically, we provide inspiration and resources for communities to run what we call STEAM Co days, creativity days across the STEAM, Co, the STEAM skills. In terms of inspiration, we're running launch events. Here's one we did in Liverpool with Ken Robinson, one in Sunderland with Xion Wurra, the Shadow Digital Economies Minister. And we had hundreds of children come in to see what a STEAM Co Day looks like for themselves. We're now working on events in Cambridge, Bristol, Cornwall, and London. In terms of resources, resources so that communities can run these activities. Parents, here we have a couple of parents at a school in Paddington, rolling newspapers to make engineering projects. This is Mango, who's the landlord at the local pub, and a, and a dad in the school who came in and pumped up the rocket to do an air rocket activity for children. It is rocket science on the Steam Co Day, a poetry activity where the children choose words and create poems around the seaside which are blown through with a wind generating machine. We'd love to get somebody like Lem Sisse to run that because he's done a similar activity in his times. We get a ton of clay delivers so the kids can do sculptures. We do zoetrope animations. The children design their own Steam Co logo. It's deliberately designed to be inclusive so that every child has their own version of that logo. In one day, we taught every child to code a Raspberry Pi, which ended up on the front page of newspapers. I was talking to somebody today who is working with universities in Buenos Aires. We've been on BBC documentaries. Raspberry Pi and Google gave thousands of, ra of Raspberry Pis away, and we, we now run a code club. So this has impact. It has legacy. There are now two code clubs every week in a primary school in Paddington that would not have run if we hadn't, or possibly wouldn't have done if we hadn't done this. We taught children in one of the 20 activities to do 3D modelling. We 3D printed the head teacher. This is Ashley, who got a spin painting machine off Chroma Pier and now does a spin painting activity. Watch this little boy's face. It just says it all. We don't need video to see that. He's absolutely blown away by the, the, the science and, the, and the, the, the centripetal force at play there. We now do that activity across the UK using salad spinner bowls. We make ships out of little pieces of paper. This is Miss Woodford, the head teacher at St. Saviour's in Paddington. One of her activities that got everybody involved, everybody included, was buying 3,000 dominoes and doing a domino chase competition in the, in the lunch breaks. I presume you've all seen this film. Um, came from Los Angeles. That inspired us to run the Cardboard Challenge activity that saw us on BBC Breakfast. The improv activity where the drama teacher does improvisation. Human beatboxers come in and teach the children human beatboxing. One of my favourite activities is ukulele, a very inclusive musical activity. You can buy a ukulele for £15. In a day, we taught every child in that school to play a simple lesson, a simple tune, as one of 20 activities on a Steam Co Day. But very, very inclusive. Every child that comes to Steam Co Day makes a little flag that they wrap around the school. We send the templates home the week before, so all the templates are available through Steam Co. They make a passport that lists all the activities that the children go through. They get a stamp when they complete and we provide the templates for that as well. So it's the resources that communities can use to run these STEAM Co days. One activity, design a car of the future. And on this, we had mums involved, we had girls involved that not, might not typically be involved in engineering type activities. That project was co-funded by the local Ford dealership. It gave us some money towards a green power trust goblin electric car. 
This is Rose. She's in year three. There's now a code club in that, a car club in that school every week for year five and year six, but she's year three. But they, can, they gave a special concession for Rose because she was so passionate about engineering and becoming a motor mechanic on the basis of that. This activity, Mr. Harding, year six, teacher in the year one classroom, two dads from other years, children from other years, a chap from Ford. If that image doesn't say collaboration and inclusiveness, I don't know what does. It certainly went a long way to getting a shortlisted for a Times Education Supplement Award for Community and Collaboration. It's all about community. Steamco days bring together parents, teachers, creatives, and community. We've seen parents. In terms of the community, we've worked with people at the Science Museum, Tate Museum. How do we get these fantastic exhibitions that happen in London and Liverpool and certain cities, how do we get them into communities? I was with a primary school yesterday from, from near Inverness. They've got 17 pupils in their school. Look at this chap. This is Nick Sayers from, Brist from Brighton. He's made a machine that brings maths and art and science together. Who'd like one of those on a Steam Co. Day? Absolutely fantastic activity. I won't ask you to guess where this chap works. Inspiring children at a festival we did. He works at Barclays. He's one of 15,000 digital eagles in Barclays who are trained up to go and inspire children with creativity and technology. They've got an eagle lab just around the corner from here. We did an, an event with them in, Br in Brighton recently. Look at this man. This man works in the financial services and look at his excitement. He's certainly unleashing his inner rock star. Naomi Clymer at the Institute of Education Technology wants engineers to be seen as the new rock stars. That guy works in a bank. That's possibly the best day he's ever had at work. This magazine I picked up at my godmother's house the other day in Wales. You can see the, um, the spinning machine there. That is the Women's Institute magazine with a young lady on the front here who's head of animation at Ardman Studios in Bristol. And she's president of the Women's Institute in Bath. How do we get these voluntary organisations to engage with schools to run Steam Co. Days? And we're talking to those guys about our Bristol event. That's the sort of collaboration and inclusiveness we have. Finally, just to wrap up, Inspirators. If you ask most children what they want to be when they grow up, they just say rich. But not everybody can be on the X Factor or play for Cambridge Town or City or United or whatever it is. Um, we want to bring these amazing, famous, creative people into primary schools. People like Paul Smith, Heston Blumenthal, Martin Ware has agreed to help us. He started the Human League 20 years ago. Professor Winston. People, these are architects from Zaha Hadid's practice. How do we get these guys, the head of creative at Liberty, Mr. Brunel there? This chap we met at the top of the BT Tower on Steam Code, Dominic Wilcox, is a young inventor from Sunderland, now lives in London. He's been on the, the Late Show in New York. Driverless car he designed is now the centrepiece of a UK trade and industry campaign to promote creativity in the UK. Dominic is one of our inspirators. We don't want to just get these guys into a school once. We want to get them into a school once, package it up into an activity that every community can run themselves. Here he is speaking at our Liverpool event. Here he is working with some children at school in Liverpool. And here is Dominic and his dad at a classroom just around the corner at the Spinney School, inspiring an activity that a bunch of parents, actually three mothers from a school in Cambridge, ran for their children. And at the end of that talk, this lady came up to me and said, I cannot believe what you've done today. I did not know my daughter had this creativity in her. That was a very, very special moment for us. This is Barclays Bank. You know what, Joe, one of the things that we always anchor back to that with everything that's going on in this digital world, actually, your work out is just all about people at the end of the day. A banker saying it's all about people. At Steamco, we spell STEM with an A. Chap in America, um, a, a big thinker, Seth Godin, says art is what we call it when what we do might connect us. This is about connection. This is the connection economy. It's the steam-powered economy. Very special lady you're going to hear from now I'd like to introduce, um, Rachel Snape. There are two powerhouses in Cambridge. One is Pam and the other one is Rachel. <laughs> And I met Rachel at a conference a year or so ago, and I'd just like to play a very, very short film of what Rachel and her community did, if I may say, using some of our inspiration and resources, to connect and inspire and power their community to inspire their children with creativity. We've had the most amazing Steamco pop-up day here at the Spinning Primary School. It's been just the most amazing day. It's been really remarkable. People have absolutely flooded through the doors. It's inspired everybody. One of the great things about Steamco is it encourages regular creativity. Of course, there's communication. The children are learning about the wider world and also the sorts of skills that are going to be useful to them 
happen in the future. That's the science, the technology, the engineering, the maths, and of course the arts. And arts is central. Today we have some fantastic given art and art going on, and of course the Scottish Maths Centre Centre. We've had spin painting, we've had rockets launching up into the clouds, we've had Lego coding, there's been some fantastic ukuleles, the kids have really enjoyed that and the parents as well. It's been so much fun to organise this. I think uh, with the help of Steamco, we've been able to put together a really good event. Um, let's come together with the help of parent volunteers. We've had a really good day, and the, the artwork is just all the kids are there. I am a plumber by day and an artist by night. Canada Corner has been really good for us. Um, it's been busy all afternoon. I enjoy helping my granddad help other people code on scratch, making a crocodile bite your finger. It gives children an insight of what lies beneath the computer. I was amazed that my, my daughter got into the, the wood carving. She spent ages there and really made a nice little carving. My favourite thing was the It's lots of fun for kids and she really enjoyed the inventory bit. She made a machine for feeding the boys and cats when she's reading and playing. She never told us anything about making things or uh, inventing a machine. So I really enjoyed that bit. Rachel Snow, thank you. Okay, okay thank you, Nick. So I'm absolutely fastidious about this idea of connection. In fact, only connect is my mantra, not particularly original, but it's sort of how I uh, kind of live my life because I think it is that sense of it's all about human connections and belonging and art and culture are a really good way of activating that in our lives. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a flavour of our school and for, why, and for that reason why Steamco absolutely met uh, the way that our values work at the Spinney. So we are very, very proud of the cultural, linguistic and social diversity of the school that, um, that I run. It, very much, it really is a community school, uh, but at the same time we say that we are a very connected and networked school and we offer a local, global, creative and connected curriculum. We make connections not just with, for example, this fantastic faculty here at the university, but we also make connections. We've got connections with Barcelona University at the moment on a project looking at dialogic literary gathering, that is children reading classics such as uh, Odysseus, uh, Don Quixote and so on, and the children are using their brains and their formative, uh, their former knowledge to um, bring meaning to these classic texts. We've got connections with uh, Cambridge Primary Review Trust because whilst it's lovely to have arts and creativity and culture, we want to make sure that our pedagogy is absolutely research-based. Another connection that we have, we are one of 200 schools in the world that are Ashoka Changemaker schools. And if you go onto our website, you'll see that we talk about the importance. It really harks back to what Laura was saying, is about can we create a pedagogy that prepares our children for this quite... Um, there's two ways of looking upon it. Problematic world, or is it a world where the children are going to be the problem solvers of the future? And that's what we integrate into our curriculum. Other connections that we have um, are sort of dotted there, and I know that I'm short of time, so I'll just try to move on. Um, I, at, at other occasions, I will talk, uh, but now isn't the time, about this ancestral instinct to connect. So there's just a little reference to that. But uh, I really think that that's, well, you know this, it's how our brains are wired to make these sorts of uh, connections. It's part of our human DNA. It's what makes us successful. It propels us into the future. And uh, I'm, I'm very rarely to be found without a bit of Lego. We also have a lovely connection with the Lego Foundation, and there are some researchers going into, uh, Dr. Sarah Baker is working with my foundation stage pupils at the moment, looking at uh, the nature of curiosity within play and how that um, creates the scientists that we want in the future. So wherever there is an opportunity, we will make the right connections to bring the right opportunities and create uh, op right opportunities and correct pedagogy for the pupils. Now, the wonderful thing about STEAM 
And I'm really genuinely not saying this because Nick is in the room, but the wonderful thing about STEAM is that I hadn't really realised just what it would do for the school because I understood the language, science, technology, engineering, art and maths, and I'm a big fan of all of them, let me tell you. But what was the most significant thing, and Nick's talked about community, but actually what it did, if I can just um, elaborate really on what that word community meant, is that if I think about STEM, and everybody's brain in this room does work differently because we are a sum of all the experiences, the books we've read, the places we've been, and if you listen to my friend Judith, all the cake you've ever eaten, Rachel, but we are a sum of all of these things, so our brains work differently. But when I think about the word STEM, I think of it slightly being a... Uh, a hierarchy thing that is owned by universities, STEM, science, technology, engineering, maths, those are things for other people. STEAM, when I saw STEAM Co. in action, and my lovely mum says to me, I'm going to do hair braiding, I'd like to do hair braiding, I go, we go, great, that's fantastic, in you come. Uh, Grandad says, I'm going to do some wood carving, in you come. Uh, we have all these wonderful resources as well from uh, Steamco, that's the, the, um, the, the um, uh, I was thinking we've got rockets and we've got all sorts of lovely things that are very technological, technological and you've got your spin painting and all these marvellous things that accompanies what's going on with the community, but the marvellous thing about Steam Co. is that rather than it being something up there, it's something that's accessible and it's a shared space for everybody and everybody is included. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a big fan and an advocate of Steam Co. and I think it should go into every school. And that's what I'd like to say. Thank you very much. Oh.